The only thing that gon' be normal is distribution Normal folks gon' infuse some Optimize your lineups and you feed the rest, you mute them Turning it up, these numbers are loud Peeping this game from a Nimbus is wild Making it, making it rain While I embrace all this risk, I'm insane Talking about that Best bell, I'm the best, best, best tell Into the next world Guess I got next still Best bell, I'm the best, best, best till Into the next world Guess I got next still And welcome in to the top 12 must add players edition of the best bell fantasy football podcast and live stream. My name is Bradley Staller. You can follow me on Twitter at FF Staller and make sure you're hitting that red subscribe button. That's at the bottom of the screen. Appreciate y'all jumping in to this live stream tonight. As I mentioned, I'm going to talk about top 12 must add players for week 11, but if you stick around for the end, I'm going to give you a 13th deep cut for the week and moving forward. So stick around in the podcast and live stream. And of course, you can put your questions in the comments section, and I will be more than happy to talk through any of the questions, waiver wire or otherwise, as we prepare for week 11. It is a big week where let's take a step back. There are some injuries, some shifts. Uh, in play calling shifts in usage this week in week 10 and now into week 11 that we can project to make a difference. So we should be excited about using a lot of the fab that we've been storing up. So you should not be afraid to put in very large bids for some of these waiver wire considerations, especially if they are uh, even if they are low rostered or especially if they are highly rostered in other leagues, but they somehow show up in your league. These are possible league winners. So you need to be adding these players depending upon the size of your league and depending upon your need as well. But of course, if there are some players out there, like the first couple that I mentioned, doesn't matter your team need, you should have them on your roster. If you have enough fab, the first player I want to, you to get after on your waiver wire is Isaiah Pacheco and Isaiah Pacheco clearly took over the lead running back role for the Kansas city chiefs. 58% of the snaps in this game, 16 carries 16 routes run. All of these were season highs, 82 total yards all on the ground. And even though he finished as the running back 36 due to a lost fumble, the usage for Isaiah Pacheco is what we had hoped from Clyde Edwards Hilaire, right? Isaiah Pacheco has slowly increased his usage over the course of the season. You know, you, you start with a 25% snap share, then 9, 8, 22, 3, 15, 30, 23, and now almost 60% of the snaps. He's only rostered in about 24% of leagues. So you should be putting in probably half of your fab or more to make sure you get Isaiah Pacheco. He's on a good offense. Clyde edwards Hilaire had zero touches in this game. Yes, Jarek McKinnon is going to be the third down back, but Isaiah Pacheco could be... Um, you know, a Damian Pierce light, right? A running back that doesn't get involved much in the passing game, but does get a lot of work on the ground. Uh, so Isaiah Pacheco is a running back that you need to be all in on right now. And it's not just that he was getting the carries, which is what was exciting. It's that he was running the routes and those targets will come. It's just that Jarek McKinnon as well was also running routes out of this backfield. Isaiah Pacheco has league winning upside um, for the Kansas city chiefs. And as you'll hear throughout this stream, there are going to be multiple Kansas city chiefs on this list for the top 12 must add players for week 11. A player who should be a higher priority ad for you is Rashad White. If you've got 60, 70, 80% of your fab, 90%, some leagues, you're all in on Rashad White. A former third round pick out of Arizona State, Rashad White, 82nd, 84th, and 87th percentiles in 40 yard dash speed scores and burst scores at the combine. His player profiler comp, David Johnson. And we know how David Johnson took over that Arizona Cardinals backfield. 
a capable pass catcher out of college, a 98th percentile target share, nearly 19% at Arizona State. And he has, we've seen, once again, almost the Isaiah Pacheco schedule of snaps, right? A, a, a higher one in week one, and then dips down, and then sets a season high in week 10 with 65% of the snaps. He was already splitting 50, 50% of the carries with Leonard Fournette before Fournette left with the hip injury. Fournette should be okay, right, coming out of the bye week because um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers have bye week in week 11. But 22 carries for Rashad White, 105 total yards, finished as the running back, 24. And this was the second game all season where Rashad White did not have a target, but he still ran 13 routes, a 43.3% rate. And he had three red zone carries, just didn't fall into the end zone. Unfortunately, the wrong side of variance for Rashad White. But he's probably in your 10 or 12 team leagues. He's probably not rostered. So you should be getting in on Rashad White if he starts catching passes. We've seen games where he's caught five passes. In fact, there were four other games where he's caught three passes. So Rashad White in a full PPR, even a half PPR league needs to be a priority flex consideration moving forward. And if he falls in the end zone, he could be a running back too. Uh, this is what I had been talking about for weeks. You should have had, if you were listening to this weeks ago, you would have already rostered Rashad White. But now the time has come. This is the pivot moment out of the bye week. We know that rookies tend to get that rookie bump out of the bye. So Rashad White is that player, uh, one of the running backs, along with Isaiah Pacheco, that you need to be prioritizing both Pacheco and Rashad White over 50% of your fabs uh, fab for this week. Like this is the time to use it. It's going to be week 11. You're making a final push into the playoffs. Rashad White and Isaiah Pacheco are two running back options for you entering week 11. The first and most important wide receiver priority on this list is Christian Watson right now, approximately 7% rostered. And he came out of the combine with some amazing metrics, 40 yard dash speed score, burst score and catch radius all at least in the 95th percentile An elite athlete, 6'4, 208. He was the 30, he was the 34th pick overall. So what was wrong? Well, he went to North Dakota State and didn't have a lot of competition. But looking at what he had done at North Dakota State, right, over the last couple of years, 732 receiving yards on 21 and a half yards per reception. 2020, 24.3 yards per reception. 2021, 18.6, nearly 19 yards per reception. He is a downfield threat, and that's what we were able to see in his three-touchdown game against Dallas. Now, what we should be encouraged by is the 85% snap share and 19 routes run. Those are second highest and uh, that have the highest snap share and second most amount of routes this season. He had eight targets in this game it was a 40% target share four receptions, three of them coming down for touchdowns, 107 receiving yards, uh, 164 air yards for Christian Watson in this game, finishing as the wide receiver three in PPR and against a tough Dallas team too, right? Dallas is has been pretty stingy on the defensive side of the ball. So you have to think that Christian Watson, now that Romeo Dubs is not in the lineup and probably will be out for the next two or three weeks, Christian Watson is going to get 80 plus percent of snaps and he's going to get a 20 to 40 percent target share, right? It just depends on the game script. It depends on a lot of things, but Christian Watson, like you're betting on the talent, you're betting on the opportunity and he's tied to a hall of fame quarterback. That's what makes sense. So like we've seen his, his uh, catch rate over the first couple games, not be very good. Uh, I mean, two for four targets, one for three targets, right? Uh, he'll had only 30, 20, 29, 9%, and 24% of snaps, right? Entering week 10's game. But now he's healthy. And a healthy Christian Watson is a dangerous player and a high upside player, as we saw in week 10. And I need we needed to see it. Honestly, we needed to see it from 
um, from Christian Watson. And that is what we're, uh, we're hoping will go forward now that Romeo dubs uh, is out of the lineup. And I think that Christian Watson, as long as he is still getting those snaps, then we're going to be in good shape. So yes, you should be prioritizing Christian Watson as the number one wide receiver option. The number two wide receiver option is Paris Campbell. And this ties into Matt Ryan returning to the lineup, right? Looking at what Paris Campbell had been doing prior to Matt Ryan, you know, being benched in week six, Paris Campbell, 11 targets, two red zone targets and a touchdown finishes the wide receiver nine in fantasy points PPR. Week seven, 12 targets, one red zone target. He got a touchdown, 10 receptions, 70 yards, 23 fantasy points. That was a wide receiver five. And in week 10 now, nine targets, seven receptions. He had a touchdown, 76 yards, and finished as the wide receiver 11 this week. Over the last three games that he's played with Matt Ryan, he's been a top 12 wide receiver. Like, what are we doing? Paris Campbell is going to get targets. He's, of course, hit those touchdowns, but he's been getting a lot of red zone targets with Matt Ryan this season. You have to like the amount of snaps he's been playing, right? In those three games that he's played with Matt Ryan, 100%, 100%, and 83% of snaps. He's a full-time wide receiver on the Indianapolis Colts, and you can argue that he's outplayed Michael Pittman over the last three games that he's played with Matt Ryan. Paris Campbell is a highly, highly, uh, it should be highly sought after on your waiver wire. He's 21% roster. He's probably available to you. And he's, you're probably the, your league mates are probably sleeping on Paris Campbell. Uh, so don't be sleeping on him. Go get Paris Campbell. This is a player who plays all the snaps, runs nearly all the routes. And finally he's healthy. And this is exactly what the Colts drafted him to be back in 2019 in the second round, right? His player profiler comp, Santana Moss, tremendous speed, 43140, 98th percentile speed score, 97th percentile burst score. And Paris Campbell is, he's healthy, he's dangerous, and he needs to be off your waiver wire. We've got a question from Terrell Talton, Taltuan from YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. Terrell, should I start Pacheco over Pierce this week? Well, uh, I'm pretty sure that Damian Pierce. Well, let's pull up the let's pull up the uh, the schedules just so I can make sure that we got the matchups right. Uh, let's see here. In Week 11, the Houston Texans take on where are they? Uh, take on the Washington Commanders in Houston. Uh, obviously Washington is a tough front seven. So uh, you got to downgrade Pierce a little bit on the efficiency side. And then Pacheco, uh, the chiefs play. Um, I don't see the chiefs. There we go. Yeah, the Chiefs play the Chargers this week, week 11. And the Chargers are susceptible defense for uh, for running backs. So I would consider, uh, if you want upside Pacheco, Pierce just isn't falling in the end zone lately. And the offense is not clicking for Houston, right? They're not getting into a lot of scoring positions, right? If we look even at week 10, you know, the Houston Texans uh, were limited uh to 16, 16 points, right? May one, maybe two offensive scores for Damian Pierce, uh, the opportunities to be close to the, the, the end zone. So I'm not, um, if I'm looking for upside Pacheco, but if I'm looking for floor Pierce is going to get 18 to 20 carries. And I am, you know, concerned the Pacheco ceiling a carry ceiling is going to be limited. I, I don't think Clyde Edwards at Lair goes, completely away like he did but obviously Clyde Edwards Lair is droppable in in most standard 10 or 12 team leagues 
Patrick's asking whether it's uh, half PPR or PPR, and uh, Terrell says it's it's PPR. So should he start Pacheco this week? If you feel like you're a dog in this in this matchup, I think Pacheco gives you a lot more upside. But Pierce gives a higher floor. He just gets more care, will get more carries in this offense. And then Cesar Marquez, thanks for tuning in from YouTube. Prioritize Marquez Valdez Scantling, Michael Hardman, or Darius Slayton. Hardman has been dealing with an injury, so I'm not sure if you're going to prioritize him. I know some people are in on Darius Slayton. I just view him as like a similar to Marcus Valdez Scantling, a low target, high upside, boom bust type of wide receiver. So I view Marcus Valdez Scantling and Darius Slayton in the same light. Only Marcus Valdez Scantling is tied to a better quarterback. So give me the lean on the MVS over Slayton just for that reason. And Michael Hardman, like if he's active, I think you, you start him upside wise over MVS, but he's been dealing with an injury. So that's what I, that's what I would say. Cletus jumping in best ball, best bell of the goat. Appreciate you Cletus and Patrick jumping in also saying facts. Let's keep her going. Talking about the waiver wire. Speaking of the chiefs, I would pick this chief over any other Kadarius Tony worth checking to see if he is available in your leagues. He's 49% rostered in most leagues and Kadarius Tony, the former first round pick that you traded for or that the chiefs traded for. And hopefully you have on your rosters. If not go get him on the waiver wire. The, this is the type of upside that I was talking about last year in 2021. Kadarius Tony was number seven among wide receivers in target rate. He was number uh, he was wide receiver one in juke rate. Dude is a, a human joystick, right? He is wide receiver 19 in target separation. And he had he was the number five wide receiver in target rate versus man. You want to know why? Because he could get open. Kadarius Tony can get open against man. Only 24% target rate against the zone. And so if he can get open man-to-man coverage, Oh, this is dangerous. It's so dangerous. And he fits this so well. And nine, 1.96 yards of target separation. That was wide receiver 12 last year. And now looking at this year, right? His game log for 2022, right? It won't, weeks one and two didn't play more than 40% of snaps. Week nine, just getting his feet wet. And then of course, in his first week of playing more than 40% of snaps. Kadarius Tony only played 42% of snaps in this game. Only 42%. And that's with Juju Smith Schuster dealing with a concussion. I think Kadarius Tony is a more athletic player than Juju Smith Schuster. He's more likely to get open. He moves around in the formation. They manufacture touches for him. Like longer term, I, I think Juju right now is the is the higher play. Like if Juju is active, he probably gets the start over Kadarius Tony, but Kadarius Tony's long-term ceiling is so much higher than Juju Smith Schuster's just because of the athletic prowess because of the draft capital. I mean, Kadarius Tony, 85th percentile 40 yard dash. He was a four, four, three 40, uh, 97th percentile burst score. This guy can move around and you know that Andy Reed is going to get him touches. So yes, Kadarius Tony is a, he's probably less likely to be on your waiver wire, but if he is on your waiver wire, you need to be chips in on this, this wide receiver. Okay. Let's jump into some questions here. Terrell, it says Sutton or Tony this week. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Sutton is going to have Jerry Judy out for a little bit. And we saw Sutton with 11 targets. Yeah, he only had six receptions for 63 yards, but he's bound to come down with some in the end zone. He's a big bodied wide receiver. He's a downfield threat. So I would go with Cortland Sutton over Kadarius Tony uh, as long as Miko and Juju are in. Slayton Peoples, Jones, Allen Robinson, or Watson. So Slayton Peoples, Jones, Allen Robinson, or Watson. Uh, Allen Robinson is low on the list for me. I would have him ranked um, below Darius Slayton. Slayton just has the higher upside. Give me Christian Watson, Donovan Peoples-Jones, Slayton, and then Allen Robinson. 
and I know Cooper Cup is out. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> Alan Robinson isn't good, right? He's only been a top 24 back in our wide receiver in weeks where he scored a touchdown. It's not good. Not good. Tony or Watson worth all of my fab. I would say Christian Watson is worth 60 to 80% of your fab. Kadarius Tony also worth 60 to 80% of your fab. I think that those players are worth putting chips in uh, on for the fab. That's what I would do. Uh, both of them are worthy options. Tony is Tony is 49% rostered. Watson only 7% rostered. So it's possible that people put more fab in on Tony. Like Cesar Marquez is saying that Tony is the more likely candidate. But what I'm saying is that like you're, you're probably going to be able to get away with less fab for Christian Watson than Kadarius Tony. If that makes sense. Question from Terrell thoughts on Ramondre Stevenson this week versus the jets. Yeah, we can talk about Ramondre Stevenson for a second. He is coming off the bye week and so are the jets. Ramondre Stevenson this year has been a baller. Let's not put it two ways. Uh, he week six running back two, week seven running back five, Week eight, running back 10. Week nine, running back uh, nine against Indianapolis. He had a running back 14 finish, and he had a running back eight finish. He is not available on your waiver wire. I mean, unless you're in like a six-team league and people had to cut for buys. Like, I don't see a reason why uh, <laughs> why, uh, why Ramondre Stevenson would be there, but he is a... A smash play against the Jets. Remember last time he played the Jets? 16 carries, two red zone carries, 143 total yards, seven receptions, eight targets. We've seen at least five targets in six games for Ramondre Stevenson. He's going to be a stud against the Jets. So, yes, you should be playing Ramondre Stevenson as it comfortably a high-end running back to with running back one upside that we've seen multiple times this year. The floor is just so safe for, for, for Ramondre Stevenson, and he's got a nice uh, nice ceiling. Cletus says, I know this isn't a waiver wire question, but I have James Conner and McLaurin and want to package them for a good wide receiver. Who do you think I can realistically get? Well, let's look at uh, some of the wide receivers that are in that tier that I, or at least a tier that I would I would guess. So you're talking Terry McLaurin and McLaurin is like a, a mid to high end wide receiver two at this point. So you're going to have to move him up to like a, a T Higgins and I'm on Ross St. Brown. I don't know if you can get CD lamb, uh, Deandre Hopkins. You might be able to get, I don't know if people are low on AJ Brown right now because he's coming off the one catch for four, uh, one catch on four targets game. But Maybe you can buy low on AJ, AJ Brown or go after Amon Ross St. Brown. Those are uh, two players that I would go after. Uh, also T Higgins. So those are three players that uh, it's worth checking out, right? And seeing if you, if you can get from your league mates, uh, of course you want to try the Jefferson Diggs, Adams, but I don't know if that's realistic for your league. Boom, boom kicker this week. <laughs> Dicker, Sly, or Maher. Okay. Well, let's, <laughs> I'm not a kicker expert. Let's just put it out there, but I will give my best effort. And <laughs> right now, Maher is the consensus kicker. Number five Maher on the season is the core uh, the kicker. 12 uh, Dicker uh, is Dicker even on my list right now. Yes, he is for the chargers. They get the chiefs. Um, you know, looking at what, what he's done, right. Two field goals, three field goals, two field goals. Um, he hasn't shown tremendous length, hasn't kicked a 50 yarder yet. So I'd still rank Maher above because the, well, the Dallas probably also gets into a shootout with, um, with, uh, with uh, Minnesota and then, uh, Sly, I don't think Sly is very good. Yeah, he and he gets Houston too. It's probably not going to be a super high scoring game. So if uh, if we can, let's go with uh, Brett Meyer. Yeah. 
Start one this week, Ryan Tannehill or Matt Ryan. And you may be tempted to say Matt Ryan because Matt Ryan is coming off of the quarterback four performance, right? Uh, and he was the surprise starter, which if if you listened and watched, uh, listened and subscribed, which I, I'm just going to take a moment and remind you, hit that red subscribe button, okay, that, that disappears right now. Hit that red subscribe button and you turn on the notification so that when I go live, you can get notified that I post a video about for instance, Matt Ryan starting. And I said he was a solid quarterback to start for you. And you should be putting him in all of your super flex lineups uh, because he had the Raiders and the Raiders give up lots of fantasy points to the quarterback position. I think the lowest, the, the fewest points they've given up are 17 fantasy points to the quarterback. So he was a, a smash play. But this week, the Indianapolis Colts instead get the Philadelphia Eagles. And I, I, I still think the Eagles are a very, very good team and a good defense. Uh, and the Washington offense wasn't the ones that were making the moves. So I think this is more of a, a Jonathan Taylor game. Matt Ryan is going to get some some pass volume for sure. But looking at uh, Ryan Tannehill, the, the Tennessee Titans get the Green Bay Packers on Thursday. And the Packers have been dealing with injuries a lot. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's a Derrick Henry game plus a little bit of Tennessee – riding on green Bay in a short week, a lot of emotions, green Bay playing at home. So if I were to just play the matchups, I would go with Ryan Tannehill over Matt Ryan. I think that there's more of a chance that uh, the, the Colts lean on Jonathan Taylor, even more in that game against the Philadelphia Eagles. Their secondary is pretty tough, Uh, but Ryan. Yeah. Ryan Tannehill. I could see them both being tough. Yeah, maybe Ryan just because of the maybe Matt Ryan. I'll go with Matt Ryan for the ceiling. Cletus, someone wants to give me Dalvin Cook and Higgins for CMC. Yeah, you should accept that. I got Taylor, CMC, Connor, and it's paying off. So I'm all I'm hyped. Let's go, Cletus. That's crushing it. <laughs> there we go. Okay. Uh a running back that you need to add in deeper leagues is Jalen Warren Jalen Warren right now the running back 56 in total points and in fantasy points per game Uh, Warren right now is uh, he's playing really well right he's 31st among all running backs in receiving yards he is sixth among all running backs in yards per touch and sixth among running backs in juke rate he's third in yards created per touch this is Jalen Warren the backup running back. When he touches the ball, he is electric. He's almost, almost Kadarius Tony when it comes to the way he just moves around the field. And you're thinking to yourself like, wow, he's, uh, yeah, like, is is he, is he moving around really well? Yeah, Jalen Warren is just juking everybody. He's sixth among running backs and juke rate. Third in expected points added and, uh, he gets a lot of carries against a light front, which he takes advantage of. He gets five yards per carry and uh, five yards per carry on the season. So he's been efficient. He's made the most of his moves, right? And this was the first game that we saw. Oh, actually, this is the second game where we've seen double digit touches. He had nine carries and three targets in this game back in week five in the blowout against buffalo five carries five targets so the he set a season high in total yards he's had at least 75 yards each of the last two games he's had at least 10 fantasy points three of the last five games so jalen warren is a very interesting player especially because there's been some rumblings now that Najee harris's lack of production coming into week 10 was due to the list frank injury that he's been managing. Now, Najee Harris had 99 rushing yards on 20 rushes. So it's still clearly Najee Harris taking the lead in the touches department. But Jalen Warren is a very electric running back, and he needs to be added off your waiver wire. As I mentioned, he's got good efficiency. He's He's been producing on those limited touches. And if Najee Harris ever goes down, Jalen Warren wrote goes into a running back solid 
high floor running back two type of scenario. So you should be picking up Jalen Warren must add player in those deeper leagues, but also in like large bench leagues as well, just stashing him away, especially if you don't have Najee Harris, right? Cause if Najee Harris goes down, then you've got a bonus running back. You're not trying to replace Najee with Jalen Warren. And I think Jalen Warren would do better than Najee, at least as of right now as Najee is still nursing uh, and, and, dealing with that list Frank let's go to another waiver priority and that is Donovan Peoples Jones right now Peoples Jones is rostered in 29 percent of leagues he's 6'2 212 former sixth round pick out of Michigan he had pretty good metrics 71st percentile four yard dash 87th percentile speed score 100th percentile burst score his target share in college only 16.7 percent but you have to remember this was michigan michigan back in like the 2015s to 2020s not known for producing wide receivers not known for their quarterback play and instead donovan people's jones has a 20 percent target share on the season a 22 and a half percent target rate Right, He's 24th among wide receivers in deep targets, and then that's despite having Jacoby Brissett as his quarterback. 25th in dot, right? 26th in receiving yards. Donovan Peoples-Jones, 26th in yards per target, 25th in yards per route run, 22nd in yards per reception, 23rd in yards per team pass attempt. Right. One of the things that's held him back are the deep drops, but that's part, of, part and parcel for the course when you're one of the deep route runners in the league that you're going to drop some passes. But over the last few weeks, Donovan Peoples Jones has been one of the most consistent receiving options for the Browns, right? Since week four, nine targets, 71 yards, seven targets, 50 yards, five targets, 74 yards, six targets, 71 yards, four targets, 81 yards. And then last week against Miami, nine targets, 99 yards. The one thing that's been unlucky for Donovan Peoples Jones no touchdown so far. So you have to think that over the course of the rest of the season and with the return of Deshaun Watson coming up here, Donovan Peoples Jones should be uh, returning to the right side of variance with those touchdowns. And if he adds, you know, a six point, uh, a six, uh, a catch, a touchdown catch, you should be expecting between like 13 and 20 fantasy points, which would get him into the back end of wide receiver one weeks. Like he has that in him. If we look back in 2021, right? Donovan Peoples Jones had a wide receiver five week, week six against Arizona, where he had five targets, two touchdowns, 101 receiving yards. And he also had a game week 14, five receptions for 90 yards. So this is a player who has shown that he has some ceiling in the past. Even in his rookie year, wide receiver 20 finish, two receptions, 92 yards, and a touchdown. So Donovan Peoples-Jones just needs to return to the right side of variance, and he could be paying off major dividends, probably not rostered in your league. All right, let's take a moment. Make sure you're hitting that red subscribe button. In the meantime, I want to bring your attention to a tight end that you should be adding off your waiver wire as a plug-and-play tight end to rest of season. And that is rookie Trey McBride. He is probably not rostered in any of your redraft leagues. In most leagues, he is 0% rostered. And this is a second round pick out of Colorado state. He won the Mackey award, which is the best tight end in college football. 89th percentile 40 yard dash. He ran a four, six, one 40 at six, four, two 45. Okay, dude is a good, uh, good athlete, and he has not gotten a lot of like usage. His season high right now is 53% of snaps coming into week 10, where he played 88% of snaps, only four targets on the season. But you have to imagine that that goes up. Okay. His best finish for a tight end week is tight end 29 week four against Carolina. But Trey McBride now steps in because Zach Ertz is out for the season with a a knee injury. So Trey McBride looking at what he did in college right over the last two seasons at Colorado state, a 29% target share and a 34% target share, 34% target share last year 
1,121 receiving yards. He had a receiving touchdown, 67% catch rate. So he was producing 90 receptions. He was an integral part of this Colorado State offense, and it may take him a few weeks to get integrated into the Arizona Cardinals as a route runner and a pass blocker and a full-time player, but he got 88% of the snaps with Zach Ertz out you know, in week 10. So moving forward, Trey McBride, you should value him as a tight end too. We got some more questions in the chat. I have Dalton Schultz, Allen Robinson, and Darius Tony Paris Campbell on waiver. Who would I drop for Josh Palmer? Uh, Paris Campbell, I would prioritize over Kadarius Tony. And then, yeah, I would drop both. I would Josh, drop Josh Palmer for Tony or Paris Campbell. Keenan Allen and Mike Williams are expected to practice this week. And then Josh Palmer drops to a, a boom bust wide receiver three with either of them returning to the lineup. And if both of them return to the lineup, we know what Josh Palmer is with both of those wide receivers in the lineup. So I would prioritize per, Paris Campbell over Kadarius Tony, given the, the routes and the snaps that he runs um, un until we see Kadarius Tony getting into that 75, 70, 75% snap share. I'm going with Paris Campbell. Is Brandon Cooks droppable for any of the waiver wires, or would you continue to hold on to Cooks? I drop him for Paris Campbell. I drop him for Kadarius Tony. Let someone else have Brandon Cooks if they really want him. That's what I would do. Like, tell me the last time that Brandon Cooks like put up a wide receiver one week, a top twelve week, right? Crickets, crickets. So, yeah, he's droppable in your 10 or 12 team leagues with short benches. I'll let someone else have Brandon Cooks. Who do I pick up, Isaiah Pacheco or Rashad White? Mm, this is a tough one. This is a tough one. So, Isaiah Pacheco, based on what we've seen, you know, got the got the majority of carries and you would assume that he's going to get a couple couple touches uh a couple of targets through the air sprinkled in. But Rashad White, man, it's just the upside is so tantalizing with Rashad White. He's got the pass catching. He's got the carries too. He was splitting what? Uh splitting snaps like uh I think Leonard Fournette before the injury had like an 18-14 edge on him. So it was 50-50 anyways. And then the the upside for the Bucks offense is there as well. The pass catching is there for Rashad White. Uh, I will lean white because I'm assuming this is a PPR league. If it's a half point or standard league, I think I'll go Isaiah Pacheco, but in full PPR, I'll go Rashad white. Patrick's jumping in maybe for this year. If your team hurting is someone valuable on waivers, you know, else the drop then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I would let someone else like risk it for the biscuit with, with Brandon cooks. And then I got Palmer. I'm personally stashing him until Mike Williams is hundred percent healthy. That's, Fine, stash him or trade him. Trade Josh Palmer if you still have something available. Half PPR for W234. Yeah, I would lean Pacheco for right now. It's possible that he's the league. I think both Rashad White and Isaiah Pacheco have the league winner possibility in them, given the offenses that they're on, given the increased role. They look like they're on the same trajectory. So I would lean Isaiah Pacheco because... Uh, Leonard Fournette should be healthy in this game coming up. Cletus asks, what would I, what am I going to do with DJ Moore at this point? Well, Baker Mayfield is back and I don't know how that makes you feel. If you missed the news, PJ Walker is out this week with an ankle sprain. So yeah, you should be concerned um, that, he was uh, DJ Moore was having a good connection with PJ Walker up until this point. Baker Mayfield was getting snaps as like the third string defensive tackle back in practice like two and a half weeks ago. So you can't be super optimistic about DJ Moore at this uh, at this point. Uh, you're you're benching him, but you're not dropping DJ Moore. You're not giving him the Brandon Cooks treatment. Jim eighty nine six start three. My fault. Uh, my fault. Uh, full PPR start start three. So instead of start two, Higby, Boyd, DJ Moore, Donta Foreman, Alan Lazard. 
you're starting Dante Foreman. You're starting Alan Lazard. And if Jamar Chase does not play, you're starting Tyler Boyd. And I think maybe you're even starting Tyler Boyd, even if Jamar Chase plays. So that's what I did. <laughs> well, I missed the news. What in the world? Yeah, yeah. Baker Mayfield. Yikes. Yep. That's uh, he's getting snaps there. So long story short, that's what I would uh, I would downgrade DJ Moore. Traylon Omar Rios from YouTube. Thanks for popping in. Make sure anyone new, make sure you're hitting that subscribe button. I appreciate y'all jumping in to talking waiver wires or uh, or asking about particular players. Throw your comments in. I'm going to continue to reveal my top 12 must-add players. And then if you stick around, if you stick around at the end, I'll give you a 13th. So make sure that you're sticking around because I've got a really deep cut for you that I'm ex- super ecstatic about sharing. Uh, and it's a deep, deep league stash, but but you're going to really like it. So stick around. Make sure you're adding comments and questions. Uh, and there we go. Omar asks about Traylon Burks or Terrace Marshall. Oh, yikes. <laughs> this is gross and gross. I would go trail on Burks just due to the, due to the draft capital. I think trail on Burks in his first week back from injured reserve, he played 75% of the snaps. You have to be happy with that. He's going to get more integrated into the offense. And as I mentioned, the Tennessee Titans, um, you know, they play uh, against the green Bay Packers. So this could be a very interesting matchup. Uh, for Traylon Burks to to play on the outside and and get some get some run with the starters. Nick Westbrook Akine had the big game this past week, so we'll see if Traylon Brooks can take a little bit off of his plate. But Terrace Marshall, you shouldn't downgrade simply because of the bad game that happened last week. You should downgrade him because of of Baker Mayfield getting the start. What percent of Fab do I put on Watson and Komet? I I'm assuming Deshaun Watson. And Cole Komet. So Cole Komet, he's a back end tight end one. So you got to look at, you got to look at uh, how much other fab other people have too, and what other needs might be thrown in there. But I could see 10 to 15% for Cole Komet, but it could get up to 40%. If you are desperate, desperate for a tight end, it just depends on what you need. Deshaun Watson, on the other hand, like I'm not putting a ton of fab in, in one quarterback leagues, unless I lose like one of my star quarterbacks. Um, I am putting all my fab in on like in super flex leagues, although I assume that he's rostered in super flex leagues. That's what I would do. Okay. Uh, that's what I would do. How much does Bateman's injury affect you, Renee? Duvernay is a boom bust wide receiver, regardless of Bateman's injury. I don't think he commands a lot of targets. Like, like looking at what Devin Duvernay has done so far this season, right? Duvernay, um, he's the wide receiver 42 in total points. He's the wide receiver 44 in fantasy points per game. He has three receiving touchdowns on the year. Um, and the, the, Opportunity stats are not great. He's wide receiver 64 in target share, 14% on the season. Wide receiver 78 in target rate. Okay. And I'm looking at the rest of his opportunity and even efficiency stats. The only one that really sticks out, well, there's there's two that stick out to me. He's number one in target premium, which is defined as the percentage of additional fantasy points per target that a receiver generates over and above other pass catchers on his team. And I think that's bumped up because of the special teams. So if your league rewards you for special teams, right? Duvernay is obviously, you know, one of the top special teams, fancy point scorers in the league. So that's what I would do. Uh, contested catch conversions, uh, contested catch rate is the highest among wide receivers for, for Duvernay and fancy points per target. Once again, is inflated due to the special teams touchdowns that he's had. So fancy points per target. He's number one in that. Um, and, uh, th- yeah, I, I would not read too much into Bateman. He's a boom bust wide receiver three at the and low end wide receiver three. At this point, I, I can't imagine ranking him in the top 24 of wide receivers. Darius Brown asking, should I trade Brown Waddle or Hopkins for ETM? Is that AJ Brown? I assume it's AJ Brown. 
uh, I would trade AJ Brown for Travis Etienne to get Etienne. Uh, if I'm trading Waddle or Hopkins as well, uh, Waddle and Hopkins just seem to have the safest floors. Brown might win you a week, but so could Hopkins and so could Waddle. We've seen high ceilings from all three of these players so far this season. And <clears throat> I think Brown has the scariest floor of those three. So I would, I would trade Brown away. Let someone else have to deal with his lumps. Yep. Christian Watson. So Sean, you can rewind the tape and, and listen to the Christian Watson segment for sure. And that will give you some insight into my, um, into my takes on Christian Watson. Paris Campbell or Peoples Jones? Uh, Paris Campbell. That's what I would do. As long as Matt Ryan is the starter, it's Paris Campbell or Peoples Jones. All right, let's keep going. <clears throat> Here is a, y, a running back that I've been talking about for weeks, too. You should be picking up Kyron Williams. Ask how, ask now. Ask Kyron Williams. Kyron Williams, fifth round pick out of the University of Notre Dame. Go fight an Irish. If you if you missed it, they knocked off Clemson, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, like I'm a Golden Domer. I went to University of Notre Dame for my education degree. So uh, go Irish, right? Uh, I'm rooting for Kyron Williams. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 5'9", 194. He did pretty poorly at the combine. 4'65", those 30th percentile and a ninth percentile speed score his player profiler comp is james white and i really like that because he is he is a profiled pass catcher and if we look even just in the first game that he played 28 percent of the snaps he ran eight routes he had three receptions he had 39 total yards on four touches so he averaged almost 10 yards per touch 10 yards per touch and you're saying that this guy isn't dynamic. He isn't agile. I mean, his 50, 50th percentile agility score is, is average. And average might be better when, than what the Rams have in Daryl Henderson or Cam Akers. Real talk. So Kyron Williams, you should be picking him up. This is a player that handled the workload when he was at the University of Notre Dame. Each of the last two seasons at Notre Dame, over 200 rush attempts, nearly a thousand rushing yards each of the last two seasons, over 300 receiving yards, at least 48 targets, nearly 11% target share each of the last two seasons, 14 total touchdowns each of the last two seasons at the University of Notre Dame. He's capable of handling the workload. And that's what I want to get at. He may not have the best metrics, but Sean McVay believes in the University of Notre Dame players. You don't believe me? Ben Skoranek, Ben Skoranek. Nobody would know who Ben Skoranek is if it wasn't for Sean McVay drafting him, right? Am I right or am I wrong, right? Tell me that you knew Ben Skoranek before the combine, before the NFL combine, okay? Take yourselves out of the running, okay, uh, Notre Dame fans. Right now, Skoranek, 39 targets on the season, Allen Robinson, 47 targets, right? For most of the season, Skoranek was out targeting uh, Allen Robinson, right? Sean McVay trusts Notre Dame players, even young. No Skoranek was playing in the Super Bowl as a rookie. Sean McVay will trust his rookie players. What does he have to lose at the end of the year? Kyron Williams could be the lead back for the Rams in games that don't matter, but matter for your fantasy points. The Rams are three and six. They need to win games. And now Cooper Cup is out for at least four games now that he's placed on the IR. There is a significant path to Kyron Williams getting work in this backfield. And what I'll say it again, he's handled the workload at an elite school before. Kyron Williams, only 28% rostered. He is a capable pass catcher. He can handle carries. And I've got my Notre Dame glasses on. It's okay. <laughs> so pick up Kyron Williams, take my bias into, into account, but also take the facts as uh, into account as well. You have to like Kyron Williams uh, moving forward, just at least getting some snaps. He was second on the team in running back snaps. He outsnapped Cam Akers in his first full game. So yes, Kyron Williams, ask how, ask now, 
ask Kyron Williams. W234 asks, how does Garrett Wilson compare to the likes of Campbell or Peoples Jones? I would rank Campbell ahead of Garrett Wilson, but Wilson ahead of Peoples Jones for right now. Uh, when Deshaun Watson comes back, I'm also like holding out for a couple weeks. I want to see Deshaun Watson get up to game speed because it's been a while. It's been a minute. So I would rank for right now, if I need to pick out players to start like this week, week 11, Campbell, oh, Campbell and then Garrett Wilson and then Peoples Jones. All right, let's add another player to the list, and that is Gus Edwards. Edwards is rostered 42% uh, in leagues, and you know he he's coming off the injury. He played week seven and eight, Cleveland and Tampa Bay. He had 27 total carries in those games, only one target. But this is a player who, as we, we've seen, can fall into the end zone and become a running back two for you. So if you are desperate at the running back position, you're dealing with some injuries or buys. Gus Edwards just had his buy. So maybe some people forgot about him on waivers, but he is a, a running back three with running back two upside. He's just not going to get the pass passing work to get him into that running back one status. He's not a pass catcher profile and the Ravens don't throw the ball very much to the running back position. Okay. We've got another waiver priority at the tight end position, and that is Foster Moreau. With Darren Waller placed on the IR, Foster Moreau uh, immediately plugs in as a tight end two with tight end one upside, just like we saw this past week where he had three catches for 43 yards. That's 7.3 fantasy points in full PPR, and then he also caught a touchdown this week. And he's played... 90 plus percent of snaps each of the last four weeks finally gets into the end zone uh, this week. And so that's what I mean. He finishes the tight end 13 week eight without a touchdown. So Foster Moreau, he is a, a high end tight end two. And if he falls in the end zone, he is a tight end one moving forward. That's how you should, uh, should view him. you you can't think of explosive plays with Foster Moreau. Uh, Derek Carr just does not throw the ball down the field very much. And so Foster Moreau is going to have to rely on the dink and dunk and maybe getting into the end zone to, to give you a spike week here. He's not going to do it on the target share because looking at what he's done on the season, right? Uh, a 12.6% target share. That's 23rd amongst tight ends and an 18.8% target rate. That's 22nd among all tight ends. And even his yards per reception, only 10.9, that's 16th. So it's not like he's being targeted down the field. Uh, so yeah, Foster Moreau, a pretty safe tight end too moving forward. All right, uh, looking at the list, this is my 12th and hmm, kind of final waiver must add player. And that's Nico Collins. Nico Collins is added in. Only 10% of leagues so far. He set tied a season high with 30 routes run. He set a season high with 10 targets in week 10 against the New York Giants. The Giants are a tough secondary, but he still pulled off a touchdown. Finished as the wide receiver 19 this week, 15.9 fantasy points. He may have only had 49 receiving yards, but he had 90 air yards. He ran 73.2% of the the routes, and he was back to his week one through five status where he ran at least 70% of routes each of those first five weeks, and he was just back at it in week 10 against the New York Giants. So you should be considering in your deeper leagues Nico Collins as as a flex play, a wide receiver, low-end wide receiver three, high-end wide receiver four, with a wide receiver two upside if he gets into the end zone. You have to just temper your expectations for the uh, Houston Texans. They're not going to be in scoring position a ton, but if there's going to be, you know, a red zone or end zone targets, it's going to go Nico Collins away. He had three red zone targets in this game against the Giants. So yes, you should be you should be playing uh, picking up Nico Collins in your deeper leagues. All right, everyone. 
Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all of you doing it. Make sure you're hitting that red subscribe button. But as promised, I have my 13th player. This is a deep, deep waiver priority. So if you're in a 16-team league, if you're in a 32-team league, a 20-team league, I'm in an 18-team league. Um, if you've got a two tight end league, this is a really, really deep sleeper. You heard it here first. You heard it here first. The news outlets aren't even reporting it, but we are approaching the deadline for this player. His name is Tyree Jackson. His name is Tyree Jackson. Do not forget this name. He is a very deep waiver priority ad. Reason why you haven't heard about him, or at least if you have, it's been a very long time. It's because he's been the phys- been on the physically unable to perform list since week 18 of last year when the Philadelphia Eagles squared off against the Dallas Cowboys. Tyree Jackson had five targets in that game, three receptions for 22 yards and a touchdown while Dallas Goddard was out. He played primarily in the slot and on the outside. In fact, last year in the limited play that Tyree Jackson had, he played more combined outside and slot snap, uh, ran more routes out of the slot and outside than Dallas Goddard did at at a, a higher rate. Tyree Jackson is a physical freak. 6'7", 249, 459, 40 yard dash. That is 91st percentile among tight ends. 94th percentile speed score, 68th percentile burst score, 74th percentile agility score, 93rd percentile catch radius. This dude is a monster. A former quarterback out of Buffalo threw for over 7,000 passing yards during his time there. He is big and fast and a big, big target. And why is he a deep waiver priority add? Dallas Goddard is going to be out. It might be two weeks. It might be four weeks. It might be the rest of the season. We don't know yet. But what we do know is that Tyree Jackson profiles as this receiving tight end with elite speed. And his physically enabled to perform list window was activated 20 days ago. The window ends tomorrow and it's perfect timing. Perfect timing for Tyree Jackson to be activated because it's Grant Calcaterra and it's Jack Stoll, right? These are not pass catching tight ends. Jack Stoll, primarily a blocking tight end. Stoll is only going to get like maybe one or two targets, but Tyree Jackson he just fits like he will fit like a glove getting on the field. And it may take a week. It may take two weeks. Fine. But if Dallas Goddard is out for the long term, Tyree Jackson just needs to be on your radar. His athletic prowess is there. He's shown flashes of it um, when he got mostly full time work. Before he tore his ACL, he was at 53% of the snaps. He was playing almost every snap, running a lot of routes. I mean, Last year, he ran 21 routes, 21 routes, five targets, 39 air yards. He finishes the tight end 13, despite only playing 52% of the snaps. So Tyree Jackson in your very deep leagues, you should be stashing him, stash him in dynasty two, right? Tyree Jackson, you can't hold a good man down. You can't hold an athletic player like this down. He's going to find a place to play. He's only 25 years old. His best comp on player profile is Logan Thomas. And we know what kind of player Logan Thomas was, right? Really excited about, um, you know, Logan Thomas being, if he was, let's imagine Logan Thomas six years ago, seven years ago, and actually playing the tight end position. He could have been much more dominant. So yes, Tyree Jackson is, your deep league consideration. He is your bonus, your 13th player for this week. Get ahead of the curve. Learn the name here first, Tyree Jackson. All right, everyone. Make sure you're hitting that red subscribe button. I appreciate y'all jumping in. And my name is Bradley. Follow me on Twitter at FF Salder. Make sure you're commenting, following on the live stream. I appreciate y'all jumping in to this top 12 must add waivers for week 11. Good luck with all your fab bids this week. Um, I hope that you get all the players that, that you put bids in for and that if someone else puts a bid in, that you outbid them by one so that you don't feel too bad. 
in the meantime, everyone, I appreciate y'all. And until next time, good luck in the fantasy football streets. Hey, hey. Really the only thing that gonna be normal is distribution Normal folks gonna infuse some Optimize your lineups and you feed the rest, you mute them Turning it up, these numbers are loud Peeping this game from a Nimbus is wild Making it, making it rain While I embrace all this risk, I'm insane Talking about that best bell I'm the best, best, best tail Into the next world Guess I got next still Best bell, I'm the best, best, best till Into the next world Guess I got next still